Hey, what's going on, my fellow cogs and fellow locusts? If you guys have not played this game, you guys need to grab it. This is not just an IP gimmick type of thing. They have meshed the PvP and campaign mode from the video game into this card format, and it's seamless and flawless. But in this video, I want to go through card anatomy, how to play the game, and the internals of what you get in this box. <laughs> Let's talk about the contents that are going to come in this box before you open it up. You're going to have your rule book, Gears of War, the card game, which is going to have a very elaborate way of setting the game up in the very beginning of the rule book. But we're going to give you a simpler way of doing all of your setup. So here are all the different card types. You've got double side specialized cards, which are going to come into the game later in chapters. So such as these cog tags in chapter six long shot in chapter 11. So depending on what chapter you're gonna be playing in, uh, which is depicted off of the chapter cards, it will depend on what cards get added to the decks. So the first thing you're gonna do when you set up is go ahead and go and look for all the cards that say chapter core at the bottom. Get all of your chapter core cog cards put together and that'll be your starter deck for your cog. And then you'll wanna go and look for your Locust Horde cards with the core, chapter core at the bottom, and that'll be the starting core deck for the Locust Horde. And then what we're going to do is make sure that you get all of your campaign cards put in a nice stack, starting at chapter one and ending with chapter 15. Those are gonna be your 15 chapters that you're gonna be playing through throughout the game. The next card type that I wanna talk about are your wall cards or your cover cards or defense, whatever you would like to call them. You've got low walls, you've got elevations, and everything else in between. These cards are gonna be chosen depending on what campaign part you're on. So you'll grab one low wall, one low wall, and one high wall, and those will be put into the middle of the section of your table. So let's go ahead and get that set up and show you what that's gonna look like. Quick note, once you have your core decks made for your Locust and the Cog, Go ahead and put the remaining behemoth piles into the box. You'll need those later when you go to the next chapter. So right here, you're gonna see exactly what you're gonna need. Your core cog deck, your core locust deck, the specialized cards here. We're gonna need those for just a moment to add cards to these for the first campaign. So you also, like I said earlier, wanna make sure you pull a low, low, and a high wall. And when you do that, you'll have your low wall, low wall, high wall. These can be set up in the format that the card is in the order. So you'll go low, low, high. But you also wanna make sure that the red and the blue are facing the factions that they belong to. So blue being the cog would face the cog side. And then red being the horde or the locust would be facing the red. So now let me take you to these decks and show you what you're gonna need out of those for chapter one. So these decks are the command decks. They're gonna have your command cards in them. So out of the command deck for the cog, you're gonna want Dominique Santiago and he's gonna start in the command zone for the cog side. For the locust, you're gonna have your elite drone and he's going to start in the command zone. To know that these are the ones that you're going to pick, they'll both be labeled down here at the bottom, chapter one. And then they'll also have that fancy card back so that you know that these are command cards and not part of the core. Once you have your command cards pulled for this chapter, they're gonna go in the command zone located here, straight across from your uh, core deck, and here, straight across from your core deck for the cog. So once you have those pulled and those are in place, you can take these decks and return them to the box until the next chapter when you need to pull another command card. After you're fully set up, this is what your board should look like. You should have your campaign cards up here, if you so choose, it's not debated that in the rule book. And then you'll have your cover walls, you'll have your commands, 
Then you'll have your starter decks or your chapter core decks. For the how to play tutorial, we're gonna go ahead and have some cards laid out out here on the mat. So we're gonna have a drone in the reserve, hunter occupying load wall, low wall middle, and a fresh recruit in reserves, while sergeant will be doing left side high wall. So a player's turn uh, is made up of three phases in this order. There is a first deployment phase, combat phase, and then a second deployment phase. First deployment phase, each in each of their deployment phases, the player must take one of the following actions, draw, discard, or deploy. The draw, well, you'll take a card from the top of your deck, move it to your hand. Discard, the player chooses a card in their hand and moves it face up to the top of the discard pile. Deploy, in Gears of War the card game, playing a card from your hand is called deploying. Deployed cards are moved from the player's hand into the reserve where they should be placed face up. In Gears of War the card game, there are two types of card that a player may deploy in deployment. One being units, which would be this guy with the unit logo at the top, and there's tactic cards with the tactic logo here in the top right hand corner. Now you can't just play cards for free, there is a cost to put these cards into play. If I wanted to play Sergeant, I would have to have three or four cards in my hand. If I have two or five, I cannot play the Sergeant. But the Fresh Recruit says any. So even if I have only him in my hand, I can still play him because he has any. So for the sake of a tutorial, the COG player is going to go first, and the COG player is going to play the Private at a cost of five because we have five cards in hand. We cannot play any of the other cards because we do not have one or seven or three or six. So private is the only one that we have available. So we'll take the private and play him next to the fresh recruit here in the reserve. Keep in mind that any card that says you will put it into the reserve, such as our private, will always refer to your own reserve unless otherwise specified on the card. Next, we're going to go to combat. In combat phase, each player's units in reserve or in cover may perform one of the following combat actions, resolving them one at a time in an order of the player's choosing. You can move into cover, attack into cover, or directly attack the enemy player. First, what we're going to do is move into cover. A unit in reserve may move into cover. Cover that has a card adjacent to it, such as this low wall and this high wall, has the adjacent sergeant, and low wall has that adjacent hunter, is occupied. Cover that does not have any card adjacent to it, such as this low wall, is unoccupied. Place the unit card adjacent to any unoccupied cover card. So we could take our private or fresh recruit and put them next to this low wall with no consequences so far um, to put them in cover. Now we're going to talk about attacking into cover. Now that we've already gone into cover uh, with our private, a unit in reserve may attack an enemy unit that's occupying a cover card. The player chooses a unit, then declares which cover card they're attacking. That segue us right into attack and defense. Each unit card has an attack and a defense value as shown here on the card. So the attack is going to be the red icon on the top, which is three for sergeant. And then the shield icon will be the defense for sergeant. In an attack, both units deal damage to the other card equal to their attack value. If a unit suffers an amount of damage equal to or greater than their defense value, the unit is killed and is moved face up to their player's discard pile. So let's say that Sergeant was actually over here, was attacking the Hunter. They're both at a 3-3. They would both die and both go to discard. If you're attacking, so say we were attacking with Sergeant coming off of reserves and going against the Hunter. If you were to kill the Hunter and the Sergeant were to survive, Sergeant would then own that cover and the hunter would be put into the discard. So to show you a full example, what we're going to do is we are going to attack the hunter here in this 
row. So since the cog player is attacking the locust player, the locust player should then decide if they want to play a reaction card. So the locust player could play a reaction card and could play blood rush at any cost, no matter how many cards are in hand or not in hand. So it looks like that locust player is going to save blood rush for a move later on. Since the locust player decided not to play a reaction card, it is now to the cog player to decide if he or she would like to play a reaction card. And they will. They will play Heroism. It does say to place the card next to the card that you're playing it so that both players can see it. You are going to be a little limited on space depending on your platform that you're playing on. Right now I'm trying to keep everything kind of concealed to this mat, so we're actually going to do a tiered overlay uh, showing that the fresh recruit is now getting a plus two plus two from the Heroism, uh, putting him to a four four. Also, upon playing this, uh, it says that you gain the 2-2, two, two, but then it also says you may draw a card. We're going to decide to not draw that card for now. So now we will resolve the damage inflicted between the two creatures. So Fresh Recruit is now going to do 4 to the Hunter, which is enough to break the shield and kill that off. Uh, but it won't be taking enough damage for him to die because Heroism gave plus 2 to the shield. So Hunter is now going to die and go to discard. And then once everything's said and done, Heroism will then resolve and also go to discard as I try to put it on top of our command. Now that all combat is resolved, Fresh Recruit now is in control of the cover in the middle lane. The next part we are going to talk about is directly attacking and blocking. A unit occupying cover, which here you see the cog are completely control of the map, uh, can attack the enemy player. After the attack is declared, the enemy player may choose a unit in reserve to block the attack. If a unit is chosen to block the attack, resolve the attack as described on pages 16 and 17 without moving either unit or deploying reaction cards. Regardless of this outcome of the attack against the blocking unit, the enemy player will not suffer direct damage. After resolving the attack, any unit that is not killed will stay where it currently is. So any unit that survives they'll stay in the reserve they don't move up and they're not going to take over any cover the way players take direct damage is through unblocked direct attacks which deal two direct damage regardless of the attack of the unit dealing damage direct damage is two unless otherwise stated so even if we had this guy going to attack and it was buffed by something on the field say say sergeant three three got the plus one plus one went up to a four our opponent decided not to to defend uh, we would still only do two damage instead of four damage. Now, if you want to play with house rules, then go ahead and hit your opponent with four if they agree. Only house rules. The rule book states that it's only two damage regardless. Then, when you do take the two damage, when you're dealt, dealt direct damage, take a number of cards from the top of your deck equal to the damage dealt, and, without looking at them, move any number of your hand, then discard any that are left. Now we're going to simulate a direct attack from the sergeant character, currently at a 3-3. Three, three. And it's currently going to get a bonus of a 1 plus, plus 1 plus 1, making it a 4-4 four, four for this attack. So this attack, he would say, I'm going to directly hit the opponent. The opponent will decide to use their drone, which is a current 2-2, two, two, to block. Keep in mind that when you are setting up in the beginning that these are facing towards those factions, as I said earlier, because the side that they're facing will only affect that side of the field, so blue for blue. And then red will only affect the red side. But before damage or the attack is resolved, each player may deploy a reaction card as normal uh, during this direct attack. So the Locust player is gonna go first because the COG player initiated combat so the Locust player is going to decide to play that Blood Rush card that we were talking about the earlier. The Locust player decides to put Blood Rush on the drone, giving it a all friendly units a plus three on damage, making it a 5-2. So unfortunately the COG player doesn't have any reactions to do any more buff to Sergeant. So we're going to have a 4-4 four, four fighting against a 5-2 that is going to resolve in both creatures dying because neither of them had enough defense to ward off the other 
character. Now that all combat has been resolved, the reaction card and the drone will be going to the discard, along with Sergeant going to discard as quick, well. I wanted to go over the anatomy of the reaction card as I had missed that prior to doing this. Reaction cards are labeled by this exclamation point, so that way you'll know that that's a reaction card, and this will be the cost corner. This one was any, and then the text below will tell you what that reaction card can do. So as an example, I'm going to put Captain which is a 4-4 down here. Let's say that they were being attacked and they did not die. That card would become suppressed and would not be able to perform an action. But at the beginning of your next turn, he will become unsuppressed and available for that turn. Also, characters that are in cover are unable to be suppressed. Now we're going to go into second deployment phase. So the COG player should have three cards left. And if I'm looking at this correctly, that is three. With that being said, it looks like the COG player would like to deploy the scout. When a player deploys a unit with a deploy effect, they immediately resolve the effect on the card. This one here says draw up to two cards. Just a reminder, when you play a card that has an effect, always resolve a card's effects in the order they are written on the card. If a number of different effects would apply at the same time, the player whose turn it is chooses which order to apply them in. All right, we will now move on to the deployment phase of the Locust player's first turn. So now we're in the deployment phase for the Locusts, and they are going to start with four cards in their hand, meaning they may use the first deployment phase to deploy the good old respawn card, which is move a unit in your discard pile to reserve. So we'll play that respawn card down here in the reserve. We're going to go back and look for our drone. Actually, we're going to get the hunter, put the hunter back on the field, and that will resolve the respawn card. Respawn card will then go to discard. Do keep in mind that when you play a tactic card, it must be played in the reserve, down here, and then you'll resolve the card, and then it will go to the discard, because there may be some things that will affect the card or affect other cards that put stuff in the discard, but then that needs to be on the top. So now that you guys know the basics of Gears of War, the card game, you guys should be able to go ahead and go through the combat phase and the second deployment phase for the Locust player's turn, and then once that turn is over, then the COG will take their turn, and then you keep going back and forth that and that way until the one player wins. And that is done by usually the deck depleting and running out of cards. So you want to keep in mind that this deck for the cog and this deck for the horde, the locust, uh, is also your life. Now we'll talk about for whomever wins the first chapter. You can go ahead and let them take that chapter card. So we'll say it's the cog. And then we'll read the face of the new card, which is low wall, low wall, high wall. So you already have that out there, so you can leave those out. And it says, if the cog player claim chapter one, they use cell block Marcus. Otherwise, they use hardened so, Marcus. Cog did take the victory. So we're going to look through the command cards and look for cell block Marcus. And there we are. So when you've progressed to the next chapter and you have your cell block Marcus out, that character is then going to be added to the command zone and then you'll take all of the loose cards, put them back in your deck, shuffle that deck back together, and you'll start the next chapter. Also want to note that when you start this game and you're not playing a simulated tutorial version of the game, you will only take one deployment phase instead of two during your first turn. One of the advantages of winning or losing in the campaign is that you're gonna get the advantage of having multiple command cards. So this number here in the top left is your initiative. If your initiative is higher than your opponent, even when combining two or more cards, then you will know who goes first in the next chapter. So in this case, if we did win, we're going to get the advantage of having Cell Block Marcus putting us at a 5 to 1 on the initiative and letting the COG player go first in the next chapter. Also, with command units, 
They are both command cards and units. They are set up in the command area unless otherwise stated and follow all the normal rules for units when they are in reserve or in cover. The final thing that I want to cover is that there will be special rules added as you go into the future chapters. So some chapters will have some chapter cards that are gonna add unique types. So like this alpha wretch, and it'll have its markings on there. And then you're gonna have some new cards coming in called reinforcements. There's also a page for multi-blocking on page 32. So you can actually use multiple blockers for one attacker. And then there will be some other rulings going on uh, because of the rules are forever changing in each chapter. So make sure you guys are checking out the back of that rule book as well. If you guys have any questions or comments or concerns, let me know uh, in the comment section below and uh, I'll try to get those answered for you. So that is Gears of War, the card game. Uh, how to play and a little bit of look at some of the cards and some of their anatomy and everything. I think this card game is pretty solid. Uh, I think it's going to do really well. I'm hoping that we see like more chapters come out with more characters because there's so many characters that are not in here. Um, like we have Armored Cantus that could be added. We've got, I didn't, I didn't know there was two different ROMs. I thought it was all the same guy. Um, but like there's also tickers. There's, there's all kinds of characters that aren't in this right now that if they added chapters or anything like that they could definitely add more characters um but if you haven't picked this up i think it's a solid a solid grab uh i did buy it for the ip knew nothing about it but then it kind of felt like a gears tactics in a card form but they've also brought that pvp element where you're playing 1v1 involved into a campaign so one person is playing the cog trying to save the world and then the other is playing the horde locust trying to destroy the world um i did see some cards in there for hammer of dawn i did not read what they did uh i, I want to i want that to be a surprise so when we finally put that uh in the decks or in the command wherever they're supposed to go like i said i didn't look at them It'll be super exciting to, to see what they do in the game and see what kind of destruction they can do. But I think it's an amazing idea and I think it's well put together. Um, Steamforge, I've rarely, I don't think I have a single game of theirs that has not been good. And it really hits the theme. Um, and I, I think it's going to be easy to, to pick up and, and learn. Uh, the rule book is pretty pretty seamless especially if you played the gears of war series uh it's when you're reading the rules you're like this makes sense this is logical this is this is this, this is right um yeah i, th I think it's going to do really well so uh i'm hoping for big things uh and more stuff to come out for this uh just so i can also expand on my gears of war collection so I hope you guys had a great time watching this video. I hope it wasn't too dry. I know I was trying to really stay on the rails with this one uh, to make sure that uh, I explained it correctly. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, like I said earlier, you can just leave those down in the comments section, please. And if you're not subscribed to this channel, please subscribe because I am right now looking at a few games that are lined up for us to do more videos on. And this was the first uh, for me for 2023. And I know we've been gone for a while, but uh, I'm definitely diving really hard back into making video game and video board games, video board games, video game and board game content um, and getting it posted up here on YouTube. So I hope you guys enjoy. Have a great weekend, day, whatever time it may be for you, and we'll see you later. Bye. Yeah.